I do appreciate you being with me. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. We are continuing our study of the correlation between Romans 5 to 8 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15 as it relates to Paul's doctrine of the resurrection. Remember, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 56, that the resurrection would be when sin, the sting of death, would be overcome. That is critical to understand. Thus, as I've been sharing with you, have you caught the power of it? If you deal with sin, you've dealt with death. Now, in the last video, I shared with you how Paul in Romans chapter 7 said that the Romans, by being baptized into Christ, baptized into Christ's death, had died to the law. Now, the, the, the reality that Paul could speak of death in such a, uh, a context, having nothing whatsoever to do with biological death, completely falsifies those who, who want to tell us that when the Bible talks about death and dying, it's only talking about biological death. I have an article right here on my desk in which a former preterist claims that's the only thing the Bible talks about, is physical death. That is absolutely false. The Romans had not biologically died to the law. Okay, to continue now. I suggested in the last video that Paul is now continuing his discussion of the death of Adam. Wherefore, as by one man, man sin entered the world and death through sin. Okay? Now watch what Paul says in Romans chapter 7. What shall we say then? Verse 7. Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary. I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, you shall not covet. Now, folks, this is the law that Paul said he had died to. Now, does that mean that Paul was saying he's now free to covet? No, because he has the law of Christ. Okay? But sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, produced in me all manner of evil desire. For apart from law, without the article, sin was dead. Uh, by the way, was, uh, was sin biologically dead? You see how Paul uses the word death and dead with nuances? Anyway, now watch this. I was alive once without the law. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Well, wait a minute. Paul is recapitulating the story of Adam. Adam and Eve were alive. The commandment came, do not eat the forbidden fruit. They ate the forbidden fruit. The commandment, or sin, revived. They died. But they didn't die biologically that day, did they? By the way, let me remind you, Please go to my website, donkpreston.com, and under the article heading, do, do a search for Dallas Burdett. Read his article on the death of the garden. Uh, it, it's an absolutely wonderful article demonstrating from the Hebrew, from linguistics, from grammar, that the death that God threatened Adam and Eve with, the death that he said they would die that day, that the linguistics and the grammar of the text demands that they would die that day. Not 930 years later. And it doesn't say, uh, if you sin, I'll kill some animals to take your place. Which raises issues all within itself. Anyway, you will die the day you eat. So go to the website and read that article. Now watch. Once again, Paul is recapitulating the story of the garden. You sin, you die. That's the law of sin and death. Adam and Eve were alive. They sinned. They died. Paul said, I was alive. I sinned. I died. Now, let me remind you once again 
that there are those who want to tell us that the only death that the Bible talks about is biological death, that we are born dying, that we are dead, that we're about to die, we're subject to death. Well, that's true biologically, but that's not the, the, the death of the garden. And it's obviously, undeniably, and refutably not the death that Paul was talking about in Romans 7 when he said, I was alive, sin revived, I died. When Paul says he was alive, was Paul talking about biological life? And thus, when Paul said, I died, past tense, does that mean that Paul had biologically died at one time in the past? Well, you and I both know, no, Paul had not died in the past. And thus, Paul is using the story of Adam and the recapitulation of the story of Adam in his life. Now, if it's the case that Paul died the death of Adam when he sinned by breaking Torah, and if it is the case that Paul did not die biologically when he sinned, after the likeness of Adam, then it must be true that the death that he died, not being biological life, it shows that the death of Adam was not biological death. Now, if the death of Adam was not biological death, and Paul's statement in Romans 7 proves it was not, So if Paul's death was not biological, and that proves that Adam's death was not biological, then since Romans 7 is dealing with the same death to be overcome at the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15, when Paul said that the resurrection would be when sin, the sting of death, would be overcome, then that means that the death to be overcome in 1 Corinthians 15 was not biological death. What caused, what was the sting that Paul's talking about in Romans 7? I was alive. The commandment came. Sin revived. And I died. What's the problem in Romans 7? Sin. What's the problem in 1 Corinthians 15? 56, sin. When you deal with sin, you've dealt with death. Well, we've got more in Paul's discussion of the death of Adam and the life of Christ. And you do not want to miss it. So we'll see you on the flip side.